All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Black Monster Cup. We are about ready to get into game number two. Not the teams you might have expected when you heard about this particular group, but in Group D it will, of course, be Solo Kill taking on Team Luxax. The latter on the red side and the former on the blue as they get off to very invadey start. Conga line now for uh, Solo Kill as they move their way towards this top side. Finding Ehamda out. Ooh, very early aggression from Nick Wu. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's... A little bit too aggressive. That's much needed health that he's going to want there. I guess, hey, Lee Sin's base health regen has been buffed to compensate for his uh, for his nerf. So not afraid to make those really aggressive tendency to dive play. very hard. Yeah. I think that was just, Hondo was just surprised that that was even happening. Why, why are you following me at level one? Get <laughs> exactly, out of here. Exactly, yeah. Um, but just getting some deep boards down. Really nothing nothing special here. The play from Zenith in the last game that we saw against Denial was really good. They made an obvious invade, got deep wards, then backed it once and did a late invade on their own jungle because they knew that that was where, uh, because of a ward that they had placed on their initial pathing, they knew that was where Denial had gone. So uh, creative plays like that are pretty exciting, but right now it looks like this is going to be a standard start. Should be normal teams. opening. I, I think they tried to force something and it just uh, they just decided, nah, it's not going to happen. This is a pretty safe composition too. From Luxax, they don't have they don't have too much to indicate that they would want to play overly aggressive early, especially considering Saki Chan going for the flask early game. Yeah, this is uh they don't know where Team Solakill is starting in the jungle. They have zero deep boards in the jungle, so um, I mean, they can guess here because of how late bottom lane is getting to the lane that he's going to be starting at red, and that's just sort of the normal path for Lee Sin. But, um, I mean, Solo Kill could have taken advantage of that, but I guess they're not. Yeah. Uh, just trying to play it out. Very safe to open, especially yeah. this bot lane, which we mentioned is going to have a hard time early on, uh, barring any intervention from Nick Wu. Up in the top, uh, interested to see how Saki Chan deals with this Gragas pickup from Jump John. Jump John no, known to be a very strong bruiser player in general. He, he typically will play incredibly rough early on in the lane, and he doesn't always have a dominating performance, but he usually ends up winning that one or at least getting very close to. The word I like to describe Chump John's play style is, in the top lane is scrappy. Yeah, he's always willing to take a fight. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a good fight or a bad fight. He's, he's an honest guy. In small skirmishes, he usually finds creative ways to come out on top, which is, uh, uh, I like I like watching him as a player. He's, top lane is usually a really boring lane to watch, and um, well, not there's, for Chump John. Yeah, not for Chump John. Exactly. He, he falls into sort of the same boat as like Balls and Wicked, who are exciting top laners to watch, just because they find little ways to get ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of little ways, here comes Nick Wu, finding out Saki Chan all the way other side of the lane as Flash is already expended by him to make sure he can secure up the kill. Might have been a little premature. Saki Chan now on the run. Belly Bop is going to help secure that kill. Looks like it's going to be first blood given over to Nick Wu. Meanwhile, the bot lane, Kappa Sun, got to be careful. Stunned up by Meow. Care Bear getting himself some buckshot onto Frost Delicious. Yeah, this lane is pretty scary, actually. The Xerath Graves, because the long-range stun from Xerath, uh, he shouldn't really put himself at risk for getting grabbed or for getting hooked by Thrash. Graves has the is probably the tankiest AD carry, I think, by far, uh, because of his passive. So uh, he's not really at much risk. And if they do land a stun, they can put down quite a bit of damage with the buckshot uh, onto a stun target. So uh, I like this lane, but I feel a little bit uncomfortable liking this lane just because it's not weird. used to their support. Yeah, it puts kind of an odd taste in your mouth. Like I'm, I'm not sure if I like this. And oh, Honda goes a little far forward. Nick would cancel his back to try and make something happen. So far being a very aggressive ganking Lee Sin right now. But back to the bot lane. What I'm worried about is Kappa Sun's choice to go for the Relic Shield uh, against a lane that clearly is going to punish him for trying to get up to the front line and uh, get shields with it. Yeah. I think Relic Shield is a, a little bit outdated. And this might be a controversial subject. Not outdated as in like, oh, it's an outdated item. Outdated as in players pick it up, I think, because they're so used to picking it up, the move speed that Talisman provides now, that the uh, that build path provides now, is actually really strong. And you don't get as much tankiness at all. 
and you don't get as much gold, I think, if you're using your procs correctly out of the lane. But that move speed, especially combined with the move speed buff from Talisman in the late game, is really strong, and I think people are underestimating it. Underestimating its power, especially on supports like Thresh, who can just by running fast be able to make some plays. So uh, I'm looking to see more supports try and go towards that build path more, but most of them just go for Relic Shield, which is sad. Yeah, it's a bit curious. I, I think it's the decision can be based off of uh, what you want for the later stages of the game, because Face of the Mountain arguably in the later stages adds a lot to the tankiness to sustain for your entire yeah. team because you always have that ability to choose a target whereas the coin indicates you're looking for catches yeah. I i've seen thrushes who do it both ways i think it's very situational but in this particular case uh solo kill doesn't have a lot of tankiness they're going to rely very heavily on on nick Wu, very heavily on chump john uh and i think because of that the call was made to go for the relic shield yeah uh oh, Rustalicious gets slowed up. I Meow's mean, actually doing a lot more damage than Care Bear is able to put out on him. Kappa Sun now being chased out just a minute. Oh, he could be really low here. They get the answer back, forcing him to burn his flash, staying alive. That stun is just really strong. It's a it's a pretty long duration. I it's yeah. a, a little bit riskier of a spell just because of how long range it is, and it's really slow moving, so uh, pretty easy to dodge, but if you do land it, wow, Graves is one of the oh, best man. champions for follow. Oh, that's he cool. He gets him down to the tiniest of health bars, but here comes Jarvan for Sarath flashing forward now. The ball delivery system comes in. I don't think he was expecting that one, and he's still not down, but they're all into this one. Honda's going to go down, but Sarath gets ignited. Cleo, oh, Barrel comes in. That was a little overcommitment. Sarath actually staying alive on that, so they yeah. lose two for none. He actually healed because uh, either Dangerous Game or Leveling Up. I didn't see which one happened first. I think it might have been the Level Up, but he actually would have died, but he got the assist from the kill on Depleyu, and that healed him up enough to where he didn't die. So a lot of resources blown to try and kill Sarath, and it all crumbles apart, and that's going to give Solo Kill basically a free dragon for that one. Yeah, uh, pretty decent gold lead for them as well. So they get up about 2,000 in the lead. And the only problem they've had right now is on this bot side, which, as we mentioned, is to be expected. Solo kill is looking phenomenal going forward in this. And they also have a brief moment of respite from Care Bear and Meow, who uh, combined to make one of the most adorable sounding bot lanes <laughs> yeah. I've ever heard. Oh, God. Uh, if they ever make it to the LCS, there's going to be there's going to be a field day there. It's all going to depend on their physical appearances, though. Do you think Meow will like lower his the number of W's in his name? I don't think so. No. It's who, well, it's who he'll he like is. add one if he makes it to the LCS. It's who he is. He might. Ah. Maybe okay. it's a a merit of his success. The more the more W's, the stronger he feels as a player, and so he might yeah. add one if he ah, gets okay. to the LCS. It's like uh, it's like those stars that the uh, World Cup players have on their jerseys, indicating how many times they've won. Their team has won. Yeah. You get one more if you do well enough. So me out feels. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of names for the bot liners, I really like Frost Delicious. That's one of the coolest names I think I've encountered uh, in, in my casting career thus far. Mm, Viger Pancakes. Oh, that one just makes me not hungry. <laughs> makes me very hungry. All right. Well, uh, if you're still hungry four hours from now, you might want to call a doctor. All right. That's it for this topic. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Frost Delicious is actually, uh, he's out farming. A pretty decent amount on Care Bear. So this is a pretty good thing for them because the later the game goes on, the easier that becomes and he can zone out even harder. Yeah, Saki Chan is, is the one that's that's doing well on the side of uh, uh, Luxax here, uh, which is surprising considering he did give up the first blood. Uh, Ch Chump John, I think, came down for the dragon, which might have been the cause, but still, he, he's doing pretty well in this lane for... Whoa, Chump John. Going yep. Okay, so that was a little bit uh, unexpected there, but he goes for it. Seki Chan in the minion line now, and they trade out dead even. I'm actually really liking the Scragus pickup for Chump John because he can continue to fight at the top. Oh, the ult comes in. Meanwhile, on the bot side, that's going to be Pleu trying to make some action on a Capistone. They will secure the kill up, goes over to the jungler. And Frostalicious cannot respond to that. Now he's dealing with a 2v1 for the time being. Dragon nowhere near coming up, though, so they don't really give up too much for this, except some damage on the tower. Yeah. Care Bear actually holds on to his ultimate as well, so that's a pretty big deal. The discipline oh. to hold on to that 
is. No, we're uh, safe. Uh oh, good. now Here he's gonna go. spend it. Well, he's done up. That's gonna be almost a kill. Care Bear going far forward onto this one, and actually, the collateral damage. It looked like it just barely missed because he jumped out of it in time. Yeah, he used that the heal as well. So, uh, that's that burst though. And flash. Yeah, and flash. That burst though was pretty impressive, and the coordination with it as well. Mm -hmm. So, Pliu, uh, that was. A minute ago, that was his first successful gank, and whoops, Sarah, didn't expect the shockwave, but no follow-up damage available. Uh, it really seems that uh, if one jungler is doing well, the other one isn't really doing much of anything in terms of lane presence, but they may not need it down in the bot lane. Care Bear manages to polish off the first turret of the game, going over to Luxax as the game slowly resets back to a state of normalcy. Up in the top lane, they keep trading blows, oblivious to it all. Yeah, pretty slow place game, other than uh, a few spurts of aggression. No dragon fight for the first dragon. So, I mean the gold lead, Luxax is actually holding on pretty well here. Mostly because of the that little bit of a gank they had in that bottom lane, but uh, the, the botched gank in the mid lane followed by the free dragon take, they're, they're not as far behind as you would expect. A lot of that's due to the turret, but uh, they're keeping themselves in this one. Yeah, uh, the gold isn't really too high. Uh oh, Meow might have gotten himself caught, but here's Care Bear. That's going to be the big kickback. Meow's getting shoved all the way around. Six ways till Sunday he goes down. However, Sarath now caught in the Baron pit without a Baron, and they are going to be able to secure him up. No problem. Saki Chan getting the credit for that one. So in the end, they trade one for one. A nice reverse of the collapse for Luxax as they get themselves a little bit closer to evening out this game. Yeah, that was a little bit of a weird fight there. Uh, they were trying to make the best of that situation, and they did, but nothing comes of that from, from both teams. And this is a very peculiar rotation here by Care Bear to, to head on up to the top lane. That's not something we usually see as a complete reversal, especially in the current meta right now of the, the top laner. That might have been... See, I don't know. That's just a little bit weird to me how they how they're going for that. Dragon's up in a minute, so they're gonna have to 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 pull Care Bear from that eventually, and he's not the one with the teleport, so he's gonna only spend a couple of seconds up here, and then he's gonna have to go back or give uh, Solo Kill the numbers advantage coming for the next dragon fight. So, mm -hmm. a little bit and interesting. Now, Solo Kill has a little bit of pro a little bit of a problem to deal with with the roaming Zara. This is probably one of the stronger parts of the support pickup is, is that uh, we're seeing a rise in roaming supports and with no lane to defend really, well, they're up one, there's nobody in the bot lane, they don't really need to do much. Uh, this becomes an issue dealing with this double AP. One is a great anti-engage and the other is a great engage. It, it kind of evens out the weaknesses of the other. Yeah. It's true. Oh, Sarath, gotta be careful. That's gonna be hard to say if they ever fight against each other. See, this is sort of what I was talking about here. They're wasting a lot of time in transition. Care Bear having to walk all the way down to the bottom lane. Saki Chan having to walk all the way back up to the top lane, which gave Chump Johnson free time up there. Free time with some CS. Save those teleports, free man. Free time Ooh. with some turrets. And they saved the teleport, so... Just Ew. not the best rotations. Oh, yeah. Now the big fight is going to come around the dragon. Last second, Nick Wu goes in onto Meow. He's taking a lot of damage. Here comes Frostlicious, gets interrupted mid-jump. Teleport now coming down. Saki Chan trying to be zoned away, but Pleo now dueling it out with Frostlicious. Nick Wu is going to have to safeguard into Sam and Lives, but he gets himself two kills out of all that. Set and done, Saki Chan looking for him. E Honda could go down, but it's going to be Nick Wu, and they are on the run now. Sarath and Chump John not wanting to take the 2v3, but Honda wisely staying in the back to try and avoid the damage. Saki-Chan actually taken very low throughout all this. Sarath has his ultimate available when he uses it. Saki-Chan, he stays alive, finally going down. Chump John polishing off the kill, but he's in a little bit of trouble and has to flash away. Care Bear and Honda should be able to just poke him out like that. The buckshot hits him in the back of the head, and they get themselves the unofficial ace. That's just a really strong mid-game team fight there, and a really great collapse. Uh, by Luxax here, and this is sort of the that power spike that I talked about for Graves. This mid-game area, especially with the Brutalizer, that flat armor pen increases the damage by his ult and his buckshot so much. It's so effective with that item. He goes ahead and picks up the B of Sword as well, so you might just see him hold on to that Brutalizer for a while, depending on what gold threshold he's at when he backs. But still, 
just the addition of that item makes him so much more potent with his abilities uh, for this mid game. Now he's 3 and 0. Oh. So Trisana, she's getting to her weak point. Graves is getting to a strong point. So the discrepancy of the power and the AD carries coming into these next couple fights is going to be pretty big. Oh, that was a really nice attempt by Meow to try and steal out the dragon. But yeah, this game is still pretty even in gold. Yeah. But the issue, yeah, is the discrepancy between AD carries. And you called it, he goes for the Brutalizer. Should be able to uh, build that up, but he's leaving himself open for options. He's got three pieces of his Infinity Edge as well. So he should hit that power spike a lot sooner than Frostalicious. However, the five man on the turret goes down. Whoa! A lot of damage being dealt out to Pleo, and they cannot collapse in time. Luxax has to give up that tower in the mid. That could have been pretty disastrous. But Sarah sort of saved them with that uh, long range Syndra stun. Yeah. The ball I, was, was on Pleo, well and he had Flash plus Cataclysm plus Shockwave. And they were all pretty grouped. So if he managed to get a good Cataclysm plus Shockwave up in that fight, could have been pretty devastating. But that stun sort of saved them. They pick up the turret and uh, and go ahead and back off. Whoa, Saki-chan. Oh, hello. Chump John gets his explosive casket. I didn't think he was going to need to use it. That but uh, better safe than sorry. Red buff Aurelia, as soon as she finishes Triforce, is really scary to deal with in the top lane. Yeah, it's surprising that this lane has lasted as long as it has as well. Every other lane has had at least one turret blown away. Uh-oh, Care Bear waiting in the bushes. Going to get the face check off. Oh, right into Buckshot as he jumps away instantaneously, not even pausing to take the lantern. It's a trap. You get away, though. Got to hand it to Frost Delicious, though, for staying ahead in CS here. A lot of that's due to that poor movement by, by Alma Care Bear and Saki-chan where they send him up to the top lane and they, they both had to transition back all the way across the map, running all the way across the map to be able to get to creep waves again. Um, but uh, aside from that, uh, Frostless is doing a great job of keeping up in the CS despite being the obviously weaker AD carry in that situation. Both junglers up in the top lane. It's going to be Chump John. He could go down really quickly. Nowhere to go! So Cataclysm just ends after his death. Nick Wu all of a sudden taking himself a 1v2. And that was a faster collapse from Luxax as they get themselves a kill. Once again, on to Saki Chan. Not something we see very often in competitive play where Elysian gets far ahead and starts to build pickaxe. Um, most likely going for Tiamat, Ravenous Hydra, maybe finishing the Ravenous Hydra. I think it's a but, fair bet. But especially with how little tankiness his team has at this point, going with the full offensive build is just sort of all inning on being able to carry his team through the mid game. Which may not be the best choice for Lee Sin because, especially without like Flash, jumping in for a kick initiation is almost suicide if you're building uh, full damage. So he's going to be able to pick off targets, but it's going to be tough for him considering there's not that many targets besides Zareth who are going to be easy to pick off because of the tankiness. Uh, Oriana, one of the tankiest mid laners, just because of the, her ball shield. Um, Graves, probably the tankiest AD carry out of any. Well,. And you've got the added issue that uh, Nick Wu has the second most gold on his team. The four kills have helped him out immensely, and that's not who you want your gold on come the later no. stages of the game. Sarath has the most, so that's okay. But they really have to get Frost Delicious back into this one. Uh, sitting at 0-1-1, one one, yes, he finally got his Eye Edge. It's followed up immediately by Care Bear's Eye Edge, but he's got basic boots. Um, he's going to be lit great later on in the game, but I don't know if they can afford to hold out forever here. Yeah, they can't. Especially, this is a, a pretty convoluted theory here, but... Lay it on me. I think that Lee Sin should almost always build tanky from the jungle. Just because of the fact that later in the game, the damage is not going to be good for him. Because he has very little dueling potential now that he's got his attack speed nerf buffed with champions that he's most likely going to be dueling in the later stages of the game. Well, so that's that, what you mean by all-in, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it, Tiamat just doesn't isn't going to be very effective past the point of mid-game. So being with the gold this close and the game this close, I think using the gold that he built that Tiamat to build, like, even a Hex Drinker if he wants to be a little bit more offensive or, like, a Warden's Mail and then a Giant's Belt on his next back would probably been better in most situations because 
He's going to be mostly used to initiate fights. And the damage that that's going to provide is not going to be as useful or as relevant as the, the ability to stay in a fight and open up more opportunities for initiations by being tankier. But I'll, that's I'll just me. That. I, I think uh, it definitely is a giant sign telegraphing the intentions of solo kill. They want to make picks early and often. So all Lux Sacks have to do is play this out safe, take the objectives when they need to. And they have map pressure on their side. All the other tur turrets have been taken down. They should have no trouble playing it safe from here if they really want to and waiting out the effectiveness of Nick Wu. Uh, yeah. The issue is that's when Frostalicious starts to become big and Care Bear starts to fall off. So as long as they can utilize the advantage they have in that bot lane discrepancy for the time being, this will mostly be, you know, in, in roams and solo kills, uh, it should turn in their favor. And with the gold lead being very close to even 600 gold difference, that shouldn't be a problem. Well, next dragon fight's gonna tell us a lot. Oh, about hello. How this game's gonna go. Kappa got meow on that one, but they can't quite follow up. Or can they? Whoa! Whoa! Nick Wu! He goes all the way in. That was the all in they're looking for, and takes a lantern out to safety. That was something else. Nasteris finding E Hamda out there. Kappa Sun flashing forwards, burning the flash of Hamda, and that is going to be a huge chase. Unleash the power, Hamda and Sarah. Go down one for one. Asaki Chan comes in around the side. Chump John joining the party now. That's a thresh box. Kappa Sun trying to get out of there. But there's going to be the Cataclysm. And Chump John knocks Saki Chan and Pleiu away. But not in time to save his carry. One for two trade. Frost Delicious trapped in the back of the pit. Does have a W to blow. But if he gets it off in time, he doesn't. Oh. Way too late to stay down there. As Frost Delicious gets exploded. The Dragon, they get the steal off. Nick Wu, though, is going to sacrifice himself for it. Hashtag worth. I don't know. Questionable. But that is the level 11 Brutalizer Infinity Edge Graves damage right there. Che that's yep. nearly half a health bar from collateral damage alone and buckshot, which is... I thought it was a visual glitch for a second. I was like, no way is Tristana that dead. Oh, yeah, okay. I was it's wrong. just really ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, they make up for it a little bit by going for the steal, but... They just, aside from getting picks, their team comp just doesn't offer much. They Every member of their team is, is pretty susceptible to being caught out just because of how squishy they are. Including Nick Wu on Lee Sin. And he goes ahead and completely finishes the Ravenous Hydra, so... Um, Why not, right? At this you gotta, point, yeah, you're, you're committed. You might as well follow up with your build. You gotta respect that. If you start a build, there's no use in going just Hydra and then starting to go tanky from there. You might as well finish it, especially since it sort of fit his... his uh, it's cool threshold on this his is, back. This is the point where you're supposed to lean in really quickly and say, Hail Hydra. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, yes, I saw the second what, Captain America movie. That's what he's saying right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's doubling up on the damage. Five and two. Uh, he got himself a pretty good KDA, but again, that, the, the troubling factor is putting all the gold on Lee Sin means your later game carries aren't going to be as effective, and a lot of those have been picks. He would have died there for sure, too, if Kappa Sun hadn't thrown him a lantern. Yeah. And he, regardless of whether or not he built damage, he would have picked up that kill anyway. Like, that was mostly Syndra's damage. Uh, so, it's not like him building damage there picked him up the kill. But. Oh, they're getting the chase on. It does have the opportunity to go back in on the Hamda, but he's not that suicidal just yet. Just yet. Man push on the mid. Yeah, I'm implying it's going to happen later on. Oh, Kappasun has been so close on these hooks, but misjudging the distance. They really need Chump John to be in here to... Uh, make a big difference in the fights. The problem is what comes of that is the 6-2 and two Aurelia. <laughs> With the 4-0 oh Graves. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, I mean, with the way the team fights are going, I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, to, to his credit, uh, Care Bear is the only player in this game that has... Uh, he did go for the Ghost Blade finish, but he, he delayed it just a little bit, which I think was acceptable considering how far ahead he was. Yeah. It, it's. I think there's. There could be a flow chart with with what Graves should build. Are you Graves? Build, Infinity Edge. Are yeah. you ahead? Build it faster. Well, it depends. Like, okay, get an early kill on lane. BF Sword, even in lane, Brutalizer. Can you and then, draw one of these for me? Because uh, I'm really I, bad. <laughs> maybe, maybe I will. That's that's not 100 percent accurate, but I, I think there's some warrant to actually completely rushing. Ghostblade, I think there's... I like the the build that he did probably the best, where 
you get a Brutalizer early and then go for the Infinity Edge because it makes the Yumu's once completed a lot more effective because the additional crit. Um, but there's... It, it all depends on a number of factors. Most importantly being how much gold you have when you pack every time. So Fair enough. And uh, as this game kind of settles in this strange, tumultuous mid-game, we're probably going to see more of the same. I, I expect Nick would to continue to try and make picks whenever he has the opportunity, but as Luxax kind of smarten up and just roam as much together as they can, those opportunities are going to be few and far between. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. Um, that. Now, this is a little bit of a lull that... Uh, I'm not quite sure why this is happening. Because both of these teams have team comps and team fights where they want to initiate things in the mid game. And I'm not sure if these guys are just afraid to fight, if this game's just too close and both teams are afraid to give up that big fight that's going to sort of swing the game in the other team's favor. But especially from the side of solo kill, because of the fact that we talked about it, um, beating a dead horse here, listens damage build he's going to become more and more relevant as this game goes on and he's going to want to make try and make things happen but really they're just sort of resigned to chump john farming up top and then yeah. grouping and trying to maintain some sort of vision on their side of the map in the mid so it seems very uneasy neither team is incredibly confident in their team fighting right now i would say luxax probably has less reason to be afraid of that they've got a 6-2 aurelia a 4-0 graves they've got uh, if not an item advantage, they've certainly got themselves uh, a map advantage at the time, because even though all the outer turrets are gone for both teams, the picks start to go in their favor, with the exception of Nick Wu making a crazy play. Saki Chan going to find Chump John, and he's going to go all onto him there. Blade Surge going to force the ultimate proc, so that is a win. And they start to test the waters and see if they can siege up the mid. Dragon is going to be available less than a minute. And it, it's sort of weird. Oh, Chump John, no yep, he's got barrel this time. To fall back he could to. Be in this trouble. is dangerous. Chump John could go down, but when he needs to, the fat man can move. However, he won't be available for this next dragon fight. That's 24 seconds to go. They're just trying to stall out on the side of Luxax. This is interesting as well because Solo Kill is the one with the gold lead, but it looks like Luxax are the ones who have control over this game at this point in almost just about every lane. Which really tells you something about the mentality of, of solo kill at, at this point in the game. I, I think the main, their main concern, after thinking about it a little bit, might just be they're scared of graves. That AD carry discrepancy that I talked about. Tristan is not much use to them right now. She is two items, but still only... Well, I guess solo oh, is actually Nick pretty Wu. good. Oh my goodness, they back off, but the smite goes a little too early as Chump John teleports in. Nick Wu and Chump John are caught in the Cataclysm. Nick Wu doesn't quite go down, almost stays alive, finally following up, but Meow is zoning it out. Saki Chan gets hot on a line. Chump John on the front right now. It's a one-for-one -one trade jungler so far, but it could be more. Double kill going over to Care Bear. Flashing forward, gets the power unleashed on him. Shutdown gold going over to Seraph. He stays alive. Frost Delicious getting shutdown gold and a double kill for the Almost ace, Hamda ekes away, barely alive, but a big, big team fight comes up in solo kill's favor, even though they give up the dragon for it. Yeah, that was a really ugly team fight there, and it was mostly due to just E Hamda being completely out of position there. He wasn't part of his team fight, he wasn't able to get any sort of help with the initiation. I mean, a level 16 Oriana with a Jarvan, they should be able to get at least a two man shockwave off in these team fights, and E Hamda just wasn't helping at all. I mean, Kerber just did all that he could to to make that team fight go in their favor after that dragon take, but uh, he just couldn't do it. They just didn't have quite that the amount of lockdown that they needed, and the amount of chase or or uh, sort of yeah, I guess chase would be the word that they needed to to finish off that team fight and, and get Sarah out of there. But um, I, that's not a good trade for them. They lose that middle of turret. They take the dragon, but that team fight is, is really going to come back to bite them, especially since Frost Delicious picked up a couple kills. Mm hmm. Start to get a little bit more relevant. Uh, call me crazy, but I don't think Comda had a shockwave available for that fight. Did he not? If, he, if he did use it, I missed it. And uh, it, it's up now, but it was down 
for I think the start of that one. It, really curious, actually. I, he that used he hasn't it, had as much of an impact. I'm pretty sure he used it as part of his escape because he was caught on the wrong uh, side of the fight. Okay. Um, so he saved it a little bit. I, there were plenty of opportunities to use that when the Cataclysm had. Well, he was up he was all the way by river. I mean, he was yeah. in the mid lane, so just not the greatest of positioning in in the team fight. So this is going to give Solar Kill sort of that confidence that they needed. Uh, Nick was starting to build tanky now to finish the Merc Treads and, and got a Negatron right. for himself. Confident. Whoa! That's Baron being started up right now. All five members in the area, Chump John trying to zone. And this is going to be Hamda scattering with play to try and to get ear in time, but they will not even get vision on it. Well, they should probably know by now. Frost Delicious gets zoned out by the distance, but... Oh, they're going to follow up. They can dive this one if they want to, just biding their time. Carebrek getting himself a turret on the bot side, so they do answer back with something but a five-man Baron squad now. Chasing out Ihanda. He's going down. I don't care about your shockwave, says the rest of Solo Kill, as they do take themselves a Solo Kill off the back of a successful Baron sneak. Yeah, Carebrek does sort of make the best of a terrible situation. Picks up a second-tier bottom lane turret. Saki Chance picking up some farm in the top lane, but that Baron is going to be huge because... Oh, yeah. Level 16 Tristana out, they're going to be able to siege up pretty well. They have a lot of disengage with the box, with Syndra stun. At least in Gragas just being super mobile. So, I, I think their siege is actually pretty good. The one thing that they're going to have to watch out for is hard engage from Jarvan and Oriana. But, and from Saki-chan. Yeah, guy from Saki -chan. Is going, This guy's going nuts. Got himself a thorn mail now. Uh, curious, considering the armor choices, that Frost Delicious doesn't go for the Last Whisper, instead opting to finish off the Bloodthirster first? It's really funny, because... There's not much armor on the side of Solo Kill, yet Graves rushed the Last Whisper before he got any sort of attack speed items. Yeah, that, and on that's the other even side, more curious, I suppose. <laughs> and on the other side, Frost Delicious with a couple more armor items on the other side decides to go for the Bloodthirster, Bloodthirster next. Now, um, Swap there's, the carries and, it, there's and actually a different a, game starts to present itself. Yeah, there's a lot of math behind it and a lot of like item, like item, armor breakpoints between... The, the benefits of Bloodthirster over the benefits of Last Whisper, but I actually like Bloodthirster better as a third item than Last Whisper because of the defensive capabilities. And well, you get double the damage too. So if you're really just looking to siege like a monster, it's a little bit more helpful in that sense. Plus the sustainability doesn't hurt. Yeah, the, the damage increase that you get from Last Whisper is minimal, but the defensive increase that you get from Bloodthirster is pretty worthwhile so it's whether or not you want to trade a little bit of damage for quite a bit of of survivability and sustainability um in siege situations so in siege in a siege situation i like the bloodthirster if you're just if you know you're just gonna be fighting and there's tanks in your face all the time Last Whisper is a better choice leo goes in a little bit too far for whoa nick Wu. what was he doing 1v5 they can't follow up and it looks like they give up one of their baron members mm. 5v4 right now, and they're going to be that right. ravenous Leo, gets a Cataclysm a off, but it doesn't land. All right. Yeah. That was curious. Well, they're just trying to force. 4v5, four, four maybe trying to get a couple of Baron, buffs, Baron buffs off, but... <laughs> that Ravenous Hydra could... If, if that item was anything with tank stats, Miku could be alive right now. He could have initiated a fight right now. For the cost of one armor item. You too can save Nick Wu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, the face of the mountain would have come in handy there, but Kappa wasn't anywhere near it. Oh, yeah. Chump John. The dash away, Saki Chan mixing it up now, doing something that looks seri seriously like we just saw a minute ago. However, he's staying alive. Frost Delicious now being targeted out by the right of the arcane. Oh, Kappa Sun, he's caught. Saki Chan going down. And they also lost Frost Delicious. Yeah, he got nicked Saki by the alive. collateral damage. That was very, very smart jungle engagement from Luxax as they, they even managed to keep Saki Channel up. I'm very surprised about that, but there's a tanky Aurelia. Nick Wu now going all the way forward. Oh, he can't get the insect kick off. Honda popping his Zanya's Hourglass at the perfect moment. And that's going to force Nick Wu to bail out. You can already see the usefulness is diminishing as the late game starts to happen here. Yeah, like I said, in the later stages of the game, least... Whoa! Oh, Sombrero! Oh, no. Jump John, he will be able to get his kick back now, but he gets it onto play you, Saki Chan getting the kill up. Darvin falling mid-air to Chump John. Sarath now being chased away by Saki. This game has gotten very brutal all of a sudden. And Chump John locked up, but he's in tower range, so they leave him alone. It's just a bloodbath at this point. Yeah. Round three, fight. Yeah. <laughs>
I said it earlier, in the later stages of the game, now, especially a jungle Lee Sin, he just becomes an initiation bot, sort of. Well, he went from, like, what, 5 and 1 now to 5 and 4? Yeah. It yeah. really hasn't been extremely useful. The. 5 and 5. Yeah, yeah 5 and 5 now. The really weird dive in early, notwithstanding. Oh, they nearly get a Dragon Steal off, but it doesn't happen. Jump down. Oh no, Frost Delicious, the communication! That was not supposed to happen, as uh, Suicide Tristana right there just. Gets one blown. goes in as one comes out. That's, they fight each other midair. Yeah, that's not not what you want to be, and that's gonna move Care Bear to nine and one. Oh yeah, he's huge. He's huge. So uh, he's just about a full uh, after he backs here. Let's take a look at his gold total. He has forty one hundred gold in his pocket right now. So he's gonna be able to pick up a Anything static shiv and then he, maybe even a BF sword after that if he sells his Dorance blade. Yo, he's got the second most gold in the game right now, just sitting behind wow. Serith, who, to be honest, has been scary, but the team doesn't have the initiation protection because Nick Wu keeps going down so quickly to really do anything with that. Yeah. I, he's made some good initiations, but a lot of failed ones as well, especially in the last four or five minutes. So, Kerber actually decides to pick up the Banshee's Veil instead of going for the offensive build. This game um, is turning around yeah. so many times. I'm yeah. trying to think, like, when I look back to, like, ten minutes ago when the Baron comes up, or five minutes ago, and, and, like, solo kill just looking fantastic, and then they just unnecessarily give up so many kills over to Luxax. They still maintain a gold lead, but it, it, it doesn't mean a whole lot when you're up 2,000 gold at 36 and a half minutes. Like, woo, a little fancy footwork with the Lantern. A double stun. I think they're afraid to take the engage now. With Baron coming up in 45 seconds, this is the easiest, by far, objective on the map. And, and it's looking like, oh, Luxax, if they can get a good engage, should be able to secure that one up. But Solo Kill is able to back away. Second Chance is so tanky right now. He's even building towards what looks like probably a Frozen Heart, maybe a Spirit Visage. I wouldn't be that surprised to see it. Which uh, would not only give counts. him 40% cooldown reduction, but... I mean, yeah, that would be 40% quote on Oh, Just Kappa Sun. Hey, what's up, guys? Just kidding. I'm not really here. The rest of the team is, however. Nick Wu gets the kick back on the second chance. In the back line, Pleyu is going to dish some damage onto Sarath, and he's trapped. Fish in a barrel, but he doesn't go down just yet. Everyone staying alive. Pleyu is low. Nick Wu now, he's in a little bit of trouble. Has to safeguard away Saki Chan, leading the charge. Blade Surge is down. Saki Chan has to burn Flash. And Chump John getting slowed up by the Frost Queen's claim, as once again, solo kill demonstrates a bit more of that scrappiness, especially off the back of Chump John. Baron is now live, and it looks like the wards will be cleared out. They're just straight up starting it. Yeah. Nobody died in that fight. That's incredible. Solo kill does come out on top of that one just because of how healthy they are. Uh, this should be pretty easy. Yeah, this Baron, should be they have a smite. Guess, although Kappa's a little bit low, he's going to go in on this one. Honda's low. That's a Baron buff down as Honda gets himself a good pick up. The Shockwave going to land on Chump John and Nick Wu. Frost Delicious, however, going forward, forcing the flash away. Bit of AoE damage dealt by Chump John. So far, one for Baron. I think they will take that trade, but Solo Kill a little bit afraid to fight this one. Separated around the side. Vision is everywhere. This is such a weird game at this point because. We haven't even seen an inhibitor go down or, or really any r real attempts at sieges just because a team that gets an objective loses a team fight right after it. So you see a team gets barren, but then a couple people die and they don't have really any means of, of continuing like a push. Yeah, or... it's, it's like watching... It's not League of Legends anymore. It's like a, a barroom brawl. These guys are just going absolutely at each other. Yeah. And one little opening gets punished instantaneously. It's actually a very, very good game for both teams. I just think that they're making a few simple mistakes in all of this really insane action. A tower falls for Vosilicious, becoming that pushing monster that Tristana gets to. Well, they're looking to bait a fight here. Maybe not. Trying to run away from this one. Chump John going in. It's forced now by Solo Kill. Luxax on the chase. Solo Kill backing away. That was that could have been very close. I say could have been. It kind of was. The engagements from both teams have just been really sloppy up to this point. Um, it's really just like they're butting heads against each other. See? Yeah, they are again. Pleu, he goes hard, but he doesn't have the follow-up, and he gets bursted and moved away. Chump John with the ultimate allows Frost Delicious to pick up a kill onto the jungler from Luxax now. It becomes another 5v4 with four members still on this Baron buff. Uh, they don't have Nick Wu, 
in the picture just yet. Frostalicious taken low. Collateral damage not going to connect. It is very sloppy engagements, but good decision making, I think. Uh, this could have certainly been a much crazier game than it already is. But with a, a 5k gold lead in the bank for solo kill, it's starting to look like they're going to get the first inhibitor of the game. Yeah. Level 18 Tristana is uh, one of the best seizures just because just because of the ridiculous range. Now, he doesn't really have a defensive item here, so... Dangerous uh, if he gets caught, that's true. Dangerous if he gets caught, like we saw. Just one stun and he was down to about half health. But the front line's pretty scary as well. There may not be a lot of tankiness there, but Nick Wu is... Uh, He's getting there. <laughs> He's uh, getting there. Kapasan has been kind of throwing himself in the front line of everything. Sarath has to get close to dish out the damage. And they can just afford to wait it out and try to slow push this tower in. Saki Chan not going to give the opportunity though. There's a big ball landing. Shutdown goal going over to Care Bear. Kapasan, double kill comes up for Care Bear right now. Nick Wu going in the back lane, finally picking off Pleiyu and getting out alive. But it is a two for one trade. Saki Chan looking to make it more. They get the stun off. They're going for it. Nick Wu is low. Frost Delicious. Saki Chan so tanky, staying alive. They take down Frost Delicious. And now they turn it on to Chump John. Care Bear trying to follow up with enough damage for the kill, but they don't have it. Batman gets out alive, but he is the lone survivor of that fight for Team Solo Kill. Now, how much will Luxax get out of this push here? They have a big wave in the bottom lane. These death timers are actually pretty long. There's still 20 seconds on the next person up, 40 seconds on Nick Wu and Frost Delicious. So uh, those are the, the sort of the two catalysts, the initiator uh, and the damage in that team fight. So they're gonna split this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure. sure if I agree with it either. Yeah, it's a little odd. Okay, so. Grog is back complete. They take down one turret so far. There's a giant wave Saki Chan has going for him, and everyone's still down. Kapasan's about to be up. Sarah's going to follow. They should be able to take down an inhibitor tower, but they're going to back away from it there and not move to the bottom. They're just going to let this giant minion wave push. That is, that is not, that's not a minion wave. That's like a minion centipede. Yeah. Holy hell. I disagree with that choice there. If they had sent Saki Chan to the mid lane, juggled aggro on the mid lane turret, they could have gotten an inhibitor off of that, I think. They will the, get a dragon, however. They will but, get a dragon. Yeah, you're right. They, they could have had a lot more than that. And it just seems that Luxax, despite their better engagement, are very not confident in their ability to e exert map pressure. And, and they're afraid of overextending just because of, I think, the fear that's put in them from the early game, uh, from Nick Wu, from Chump John. Yeah. It's, it's hard to deal with. And, and this is just going to buy even more time for Frost Delicious to get up to a very scary point. Well, there's not really much more he can do at this point. I mean, he's got all the offensive items he's going to get unless he opts to sell, like, boots. So mm -hmm. his damage threshold is there. Like, he's, well, his he's... kill participation hasn't been as high, though. That, that, that's part of the issue. He's been oh, in the back line, which is safe. Abysmal. But then he's not doing anything for his team when they bail out. Yeah. And even right then, he was full health against, like, a half-health Sekijin. And even with people peeling for him, he wasn't able to kite well enough. Just because he like kills himself against the Thord Mail, so he's he's gonna have some some trouble here, and he he's really got to worry about his positioning, and he's really got to focus on getting like pot shots at squishier targets, and not just wait for an opportunity to clean up. He he's got to find opportunities to deal damage, other than just the fact, just the point where they're trying to to, to clean up a fight or something. Yeah. Now. Oh, well, this it is interesting. Could be out of position a little bit. They do have an They're open rushing inhibitor. down the mid right now. Yeah, Luxax. Oh, They're trying to go John. for They're going to find Chump John. He's going to get his big barrel off to zone everybody away. Here comes Nick Wu into the fight, but he is alone right now. Takes a lot of damage being poked in the back of the head. Once again, Care Bear's ult does not connect. Just barely. Saki Chan leading the charge. Very tanky on this Aurelia as they look to push in towards inhibitor number one. Can Luxax take that one out? Big three man stun coming out of Sarath now. They're looking to chase this one forward. Saki Chaney goes in. The ball, it's going to connect, but Sarath gets his zonies off in time. Now they're just chasing for kills. Pleu zoning out everyone. He's getting hooked up on a line, going down to Frost Delicious, and they get out without even taking the inhibitor. This is a disaster for Luxex. They could have had so much more, but got a little greedy on that one. And now Nick Wu looking to punish him even further. Gets the Sonic Wave off onto Saki Chan. Rethinks his options, though. The initiations from Luxex in this game have been just pretty bad. It's they're just not helping themselves out here. Oh, Nick Wu! Woo! That was yeah, gonna go for that. He doesn't want that. that. Thirty seconds suicide. on Baron. Uh, this could be another Baron going over to solo kill, just because they're not gonna have Pleu by the time it comes up, and they're actually gonna try and 
shove in the mid right now. This is very, very dangerous. Capistan's low, but they get Care Bear locked up. He's in the AoE. He's going down. Unleash the power. Saki Chan now trying to answer back on a Frost Delicious, but he doesn't have the answer as well. They lose out on so much there. Saki Chan getting his Guardian Angel pop should go down after all of this. And he's got nowhere to go. The ball's going to land, although he makes a go of it. Honda, he's going pretty low. Shutdown Gold is going over, as well as a double kill to Frost Delicious, who forces the flash out of Honda frantically now. Luxax trying to get out of this one. Again, they take a very, very poorly timed engagement and lose even more. But they did manage to get Sarath and Capisun for all the trouble. Yeah, I think they need to back, though. Because if they, unless they pick up an inhibitor oh, from... Wow, okay, dude, yeah. never mind. Frostless has just hit the good, scary level. Good choice. Um, this should be an inhibitor. This should be an inhibitor, no yeah. problem. Tom is not going to be able to get back in time to defend this. Pleu doesn't have the pressure against this three man. First inhibitor of the game is, is it looks questionable for a second, but it goes to solo kill. And now they have the they have their to start up, up Baron pretty soon. And the majority of their damage, so. Baron's risky. For it. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna go for it. Uh, might paint this one out. Actually, they have a pretty big wave to deal with on the bot side. It, it would be pretty unwise. Yeah. Oh, the, <laughs> oh man. Pleu, he goes forward for it, might pay with his life. Frost Delicious gets the jump off, and Nick Wu, forcing the flash away. Can they secure this kill, however? Shouldn't be too much trouble. Nick Wu just needs to land one more Sonic Wave. He gets the Dragon's Rage off. It's Frost Delicious with not even a Buster Shot getting himself a kill. So once again, it's a 5v4, but they don't have the ability to start the Baron just yet. Jungler's down, so... I mean, uh, they could certainly force it, but there's way too many members here from Luxax to really do it cleanly. I'm really looking for Care Bear to make more of a splash in these team fights. Well, for 11 and 2 and 8, I mean, he has insane kill participation, but lately, he's been missing a lot of skill shots. I don't think I've seen a collateral damage connect in the last five minutes. No, it, and more than that. And he, in the late game, you sort of have, have to transition. You can't let the, the damage fool you on on collateral damage because it... it it's not an execution anymore. There's, yeah. there's way too much armor. And Delp Randuin's here, uh, you know, Guardian Angel on Sarath. Yeah, that's it's not going to help that much. So at the beginning of the game, I agree in the in the choice of using it sort of as an execute, using it as a finisher because it's damage that can come out of nowhere. You can take your opponent off guard. But in the later game, you want to use it guard. as quick as possible, especially with the build that he has with heavy armor pen. This Baron could easily go down before they have a chance to react. Saki Chan's in here. That's going to be the right of the Arcane going in. Saki Chan trying to make something happen. Baron's still alive. It's kicking. Saki Chan is going down. Nick Wu getting himself the kill for that one. Chump John almost stays alive, and the execution finally comes in from I'm a Care Bear. Nick Wu is still taking poke. They get Honda on a line. This is going absolutely insane right now, Azumo. Kapasan is going to fall down. Honda getting the kill. How did this go so crazy? For team, solo kill, Luxax on the chase, Meow and Care Bear, Sarah, he's zoning him out, I don't know if he's going to live through this one though, he's going to get his Guardian Angel pop, Care Bear falling down to Frost Delicious, they stayed too long, two for two, two for three now, that is going to be yet another kill, Sarah, Honda's in the back line with Pliu, Nick Wu is going to go for the dive here, gets a Dragon's Rage, but Pliu should be able to poke him down, I don't know about these engages, every single time it looks like it's going to be good. What? Something happens, what is going on Azumo? I have no idea, the... It's the, not done! The initiation was terrible. What are you doing, Nick Wu? Ugh. He's buying time because yeah. they have super minions here. They can push it down. These are the yeah. only two members alive. There's still yeah, 16 this is, this is seconds brilliant. on Saki Chan. You He's actually going to. Oh, oh! Never mind. But yeah, they're going to give up Nexus Towers for this. One's going down. This could Frost be the delicious. game. This actually could be game. He's coming back. Leo, can you get enough damage on the Frost Delicious? Stun comes out. Sarath doesn't have Guardian Angel. Frost Delicious is not going to live through this. Or is he just going to go down? Oh my that gosh was a really abrupt ending, actually. Yeah, I am a little bit surprised. Oh, and they get the double explosion, too. Yeah, my my screen didn't even catch up with the victory. Even the League of Legends client was surprised that the game ended at that point. It's like, what? Yeah, that was... It, it was actually really brilliant. For a second, I, I was really not sure what Nikwa was doing. And then I and then you mentioned it, and I looked up, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, okay, well, there's really not much to say. I don't know. I think we ran out of words. So Just really... Team Solo Kill knocks Team Luxax down into the loser bracket. A, yeah. a massive turnaround back and forth every single minute of that game. In almost 50 minutes. Ends abruptly just like that. And you know what that means? We've got uh, Zenith Esports 
taking on Team Luxax in our losers match in just a moment. That should be really interesting. I, I'm looking for Team Luxax to clean up their engagements, make them a little bit more crisp, because that's pretty much what lost in the game there. It's their hesitation, their communications, and just the poor engagements overall. But they had, I mean, like, good fights after poor engagements. It was a little bit tough to understand, but it, it should be a good match in the last. I think so too. Zenith has had some trouble with some of their engagement choices as well, so we'll see how this next game goes down. The loser of that match will of course be knocked out of the Black Monster Cup. The winner will have a chance to make it into the playoffs still, but that will be our next matchup. Don't go anywhere, guys, because you are watching Black Monster Cup Group D. You are not going to want to miss this next one. We'll be right back. 